We are talking with Senator James Inhofe, Republican from Oklahoma, in his offices today. And uh, you are going to be a featured speaker at CPAC on uh, Friday uh, Friday morning. Is yeah, day after tomorrow, we're going to do it. Unfortunately, we don't have enough time uh, to get everything out. And there's a good, that's kind of good news in a way. They've got so many demands on the limited time that they have for that great crowd because of what's happening in this country, because we have a president destroying this country. And so I think for that reason, I'm, uh, they've knocked me down now from 40 minutes to 10 minutes, but I'm going to let it all out. Yeah, it's a pretty jam-packed schedule over there, but uh, you're going to be talking about a lot of different issues. I was just speaking with Representative um, Buck McKeon over on the other side of the Capitol about defense cuts, and I want to talk to you a little bit about that. But before we get to that, I understand that you've got a new book coming out. Oh, I do. Go over and get it so I can hold it up. Um, I do. It, it's, it's called The Greatest Hoax. You know, Ed, you know this, but a lot of your viewers and uh, people do, are not aware of it. There it is, The Greatest Hoax. The Greatest Hoax is going to be featured with uh, Sean Hannity on the 27th of this month, and I'll be on his show talking about it. Then it'll be on the bookshelves on the 28th. And what it is, is uh, you're aware of this, a lot of people aren't. When Kyoto came up, I was the one that took the, the reins to defeat that. And then we started having members of the Senate introducing bills. John McCain and uh, Lieberman introduced the McCain-Lieberman bill of 03. We defeated it, and I was the only one down there on the floor to do this. And then they came back, and because uh, everyone was afraid of global warming at that time. And so McCain and Lieberman had another bill on uh, 05, and we beat that one. Then later on, um, oh, I, Markham, uh, what was Mark, the other one? Yeah, yes. Waxman, Markey, uh, their bill. Anyway, what this amounts to is a three to four hundred billion dollar tax increase on the American people, and you don't get anything for it. Lisa Jackson, who's the administrator of the EPA, the, the Obama administrator of the EPA, admitted publicly, live on TV, when I asked her the question, that if we were to pass these bills, yes, it'd be a huge tax increase. Would you, would you get anything for it? And she said no because that only affects America, this isn't where the problem is. And so we'd be chasing our manufacturing base overseas to China, India, Mexico, and other places where they'd actually end up with more emissions than if they didn't do it. So that's what's going on now. I'll shorten this up. We defeated all of the cap and trade bills. They're all dead, gone forever. Now the problem is this. The president's trying to do with regulations what he couldn't do with legislation. And it's going to be even more expensive if he gets by with it. And that's the major reason for the book. Because I almost quit writing it when we defeated all the legislation. Then when he, we found out he was going to have an endangerment finding using science. And what science did he use? The IPCC. That's the United Nations. And it's flawed. Remember Climate Gate? I think everyone realizes that. And, and just this week, you had two more, uh, two more people that used to work with the IPCC, and I, and I apologize for the names. Yeah. And they've, they've come out and said the science is terrible. The IPCC well, it, science it, is They terrible. rigged the science. Right. I mean, look at David Bellamy was the guy that was heading it up for the UK. He's over on our, well, he's dead now, but he, was, he came over before he died. Uh, Claude Allegra, he was the one heading it up for France. He came over to our side. A guy named Nir Shaviv in Israel, he's come over to our side. And I, I you know, Mark Morano has all the names of, uh, of uh, literally thousands of scientists that are on our side now. But the problem is this. One of the things you'll find in this book is that we give the history of the United Nations. They started, they first started addressing not global warming, but somehow controlling if it, at that time in 1972 it was actually an ice age. They were talking about an ice age. Right. Everyone's going to die. You remember that? I do. I remember and, that very and, well. <laughs> and, well they, they, started, they had this conference in Stockholm called the Human Environmental Conference. Fifteen years later, they put it together and they put together a program where trying to get control, saying that we, it's called sustainable uh, development. Sustainable development. The concept is we can, this planet cannot sustain the population that's coming with the current development. And so they want to more equalize the development so that the Western nations, United States, we're living in too lavish of a, a lifestyle. So we need to drop down and become more like the developing nations in Africa and throughout the world. Well, anyway, that's what they were, that was what they tried to do. And we have a whole history of that in this book, everything documented. 
and uh, people are going to be a lot smarter on this subject when that happens. I've often said, and you've heard me say this, that a lot of the bad things, many of the bad things that come to this country come from the United Nations. And uh, every time we pass a resolution, and I've been the one who's done this, uh, when they come up with a policy that's not in the best interest of the United States, we say we're going to, we send a resolution to the UN saying we're going to withhold our percentage of our dues. Well, they hate that. So they've been trying to become independent of and not accountable to any country. How do they do that? Global warming. So they'd be the ones in charge. They'd be the ones collecting all this money. What have you seen recently? You saw that in the, uh, I think it was, I'm not sure which country it was in Europe, but they are now taking that money and using it for high speed rail and all that right. that they're getting from other people, having nothing to do with, with uh, global warming. So we're gonna, we've stopped that thing and I feel good about it. Well, good. And so the book is coming out on February 28th. Mm -hmm. and on the 27th, you're going to be on uh, Sean Hannity's uh, show to, to preview it there. That's right. right. And then good. Geraldo the next day and, and uh, Excellent. Uh, the next uh, Monday morning is going to be Fox and Friends. Mm -hmm. So we're going to be You're going to getting be giving the, the big media send off. Now, are you going to be talking about this at CPAC on Friday? I am, but I can only do it for 10 minutes. And right. I've already talked to you longer than 10 minutes, so you know the problem <laughs> I've got. <laughs> So we just got the big jump on CPAC. That's you did. Good. You oh, got the you got a, a, the expanded version. Excellent. <laughs> well, let's talk a little bit about the defense cuts. Then I was just speaking with uh, Representative McKeon, the House uh, Armed Services uh, Committee Chair. You, you, you know, I, I look at it Ed, a little differently than most people. I spend a lot of time over there. I, I spend every New Year's Eve in Afghanistan with the kids, and I'd like to get from them what how it's really going to affect them. The problem that we've had is that the stuff that we get there, like MRAP and other things, are things we find that these kids have to have. It's, it's a life-saving thing. The first budget of Obama, they cut the, they did away with the only fifth generation fighter, the F-22, did away with our lift capacity, the C-17, did away with the future combat system. But the worst thing they did, and this is something that our, our, those listening to us right now, I'll, I'll probably lose my credibility when I say this. One of the things he did, this is four years ago, was he took in, the, in Poland our ground-based interceptor and did away with it. And the reason we were building one there is that we have ground-based interceptors in Alaska and California. I'm not worried about a missile coming into the United States from the west, but Iran, it'd have to come in from the east. Right. And our chances, that was built so we could get something coming in from the east. Only t just a couple of days ago, Leon Panetta said on 60 Minutes, that, uh, that Iran is going to have the capability of sending a weapon over in the delivery system in two years. Wow. Well, we've known that now for about four years. And so what's that going to do to us? We're virtually naked. And this president has done this to us. Now, back to the defense budget. He has, just through his actions, has, uh, in terms of funding, has dropped it down a half trillion dollars. And by agreeing to sequestration, that would be another half a trillion dollars. In other words, another, over and above what he's done to dis disarm America already, another trillion dollars over the next 10 years. And this is, I mean, you know, we're talking about just from, strictly from a jobs perspective, this is going to be a, this is going to be a devastating, well, it a devastating is. effect it, on American jobs. It, it is. It, it, on American jobs, I, and I, that's very significant, but more significant is our defense. Right. You know, we, we've, we've got our kids over there. I, I went down to uh, a, a couple of days ago down to Fort Worth where they're building the, the F-35, the Joint Strike Fighter. Right. And that is the one that's supposed to take up the slack of the F-22, which it can't really do because the mission is different on that plane. But their concern is they keep dropping it down and postponing it, and each time they do that, it becomes more expensive per copy. And I think this president's just trying to get stop as much stuff as he can uh, between now and the time that he is while well, he's president. And he's doing this, of course, a lot of it's catering to the, to his left. Look what he's done in energy. I mean, I, I was sitting next to Barbara Boxer during the State of the Union message. I'm sorry. Well, but <laughs> see, actually, it was not my idea. They called it, the Democrats put this together. They called it date night, where yes. they had a Democrat ask it. Well, she was the one who asked me. Well, the re, you know why the Democrats wanted to do that? Because... When the, the, when, the, when the president says something and all the Democrats stand up, you can see those are all Democrats. And then the Republicans aren't standing. And those are the things that the American people identify with. So the Democrats didn't want them to be identified with all the damage this guy's doing. 
But anyway, when they start, he started talking about natural gas and these things, what he whispered then, only three or four words he said, but we can't ruin our poison our plant with processes. Well, what he's talking about is hydraulic fracturing. Right. Right now, if we could just develop all the recoverable resources we have, we'd be completely free from our dependence on the Middle East, not in years, in weeks. And, and this is a, a major issue. And the four big issues are destroying our, uh, uh, us, and, you know, uh, uh, our military, the some almost five trillion dollars of deficits in four years, and this is all the president. The, he's the one who drafts the budget. The overregulation that we're talking about, what he's trying to do with cap and trade through regulation, and then the fact that he's killing energy in America, and it's by design. He wants to kill fossil fuels. <laughs> so we're talking about the defense budget. Let's talk about budgets in general. Uh, it's been, what, a thousand days? Now it's been, I, I've lost count. I quit counting at a thousand days. Yeah, a thousand days. I think <laughs> after a thousand days, it's just been a really long time yeah, since the yeah. Senate passed a budget. Senate Majority Leader Harry Reid says he's not concerned about passing a budget resolution. Well, we sure. need to have a budget and all that. Frankly, I have the other four things ahead of that because that's the immediate things that are destroying this country. But yeah, you have to have a budget. I mean, that's it. How many people in America uh, would say that they don't have a budget in their own household? I mean, that's, that's what we do. And we haven't, and that's bad. But that's not as bad as what he's doing in terms of the deficits that he's piled up in the years it will take to overcome that. What's the, what's the solution to, to the deficit problem as you see it? Oh, get rid of Obama. See, a lot of people don't realize the, the budget is really one man. It's not the Democrats, the Republicans, not the House and the Senate. It's the, the guy by himself. And Obama has done this. Now, does it seem reasonable that he... I can remember back in 1996 when Bill Clinton was president. And he came out with a $1.65 trillion budget for the United States to run the country. I went down, that was new in the Senate at that time, I went down yelling and screaming, we can't sustain this. Well, that was $1.65 trillion to run the entire country. This president, two years ago, his deficit alone was $1.65 trillion. Mm -hmm. And so he runs up more than a trillion dollars of deficits in each one of his budget. He's doing it. He's the guy responsible. Then he comes out and appoints a, a committee to see why we're spending so much money. And then he doesn't pay any attention to and what the committee says. And then he ignores them anyway. But right. it's just, these things are not believable. That's the, the credibility I have is I, I get frustrated because people understandably don't believe all this stuff. And we know it's true. And I've got 20 kids and grandkids that they, they're going to have to pay for all this fun. Right, right. Now, um, obviously, the big election year this year, you're talking about getting rid of Obama. Uh, without getting into, I don't know if you want to get into who you like or you don't like. Well, my was candidate uh, was, was Rick Perry, governor of Texas. We talked about this last yeah, year. Yeah, and he was wasn't, because he was the strongest, I thought, of anyone on regulations and on energy. He's very good. And I still don't know what happened, but anyway, he's not there anymore. What do Republicans uh, need to do this year? Uh, regardless of who the Republican nominee is, and uh, like I said, I don't necessarily want to put you on the spot about picking one that's in the field right now, but what do Republicans have to do? What, what do they need to well, do? Well, let me just go ahead. I, I have not endorsed since I endorsed uh, Rick Perry. And I don't think I will, but I have to say this. Uh, Wednesday morning is my radio calls that I do radios around, and one of my regular calls is to uh, uh, to uh, Israel, uh, a Jerusalem uh, group, and and they were talking about they're concerned about what's happening to the military because we do so many things in concert with each other. We've got Syria looming up there, we got Iran looming up there, we got all these problems that we we'll have to be together on. So I, they asked me the question. We we had a long interview. I talked about the four areas where our president is destroying America. Number one, fiscally, with the man, with, with the deficits. Number two, the military that he's uh, disarming America. And number three, the energy that he is destroying, trying to kill fossil fuel. And number four, the regulations. He asked the question of the ones who are in still in the race now. Who would do you think would do the best in those four areas? And I said Rick Santorum. I, I know Rick real well, and and uh, and I do know that you could depend on in these four areas. And that was what the question was, and I, that was my answer. Answer your question, I think that if we, uh, if we get to the point where we know we have someone to rally behind, 
uh, then we need to really do it and, and work on him. My concern with Mitt Romney, if he should be the one, uh, he hasn't been strong in those four areas. And what I don't want to have, I don't want to go into an election like we did with John McCain, uh, where we have somebody who didn't draw a distinction between who they are and who we are. And I think that we need to work on whoever our nominee is. And uh, if it happens to be uh, Rick Santorum, that'll be easy because he'll do that himself. Show people that there is a difference. You feel hopeful about the about the 2012 election? You know, I, well, first of all, it's uh, we'll retain our majority in the House. We will gain a majority in the Senate. I'm sure of both of those. I feel hopeful. That's a good way to characterize it. Good. I wish I were certain. <laughs> well, um, it certainly would yeah. be nice. One last issue I have to ask you about: during the, all the debates over Obamacare, conservatives routinely warned that it represented a, a massive intrusion of government into people's personal lives. Well, now they know. Now they know. Um, and uh, the, the new HHS mandate that religious organizations must pay, you know, pay full cost for contraceptive uh, uh, procedures and, and medications, including some that cause, you know, that are, are poor sure. patients. Um, first off, your reaction to that um, edict, and what can the Senate do? Well, we have two bills that, but uh, I'm... I know Obama well enough that he's not going to let this linger. And I think he's going to correct it because he has to do it because he's up for election. And uh, this is an issue that transcends party lines, uh, cultural lines, religious lines, and it's one that he can't stay with and have any hope of being reelected. So I think that he's going to pull out of that thing. Just remember you heard it here first. Now, in the absence of that, uh, the. Uh, I joined uh, Marco Rubio and what I think is the best solution to it. And so we have two bills out there that we could pursue. And I think the quicker we pursue them, the, the result's going to be Obama pulling out because you know, he didn't have, he, he was throwing that stuff out for the left, but he's, he'll only do so much for the left. He still has to be reelected in his mind. Senator James Inhofe, thanks so much for spending some time with us today. My honor, Ed.